boys and girls, what a treat. Jason Corsello, one of the top HR analysts in the world, or at least he was until he went over to the dark side. The dark side that's right. Jason, what on <laughs> earth have you done? You've sold your soul. Tell us why you've done it. I've done the dark side then. Go on. Well, I, uh, recently I moved to a, a vendor called Cornerstone On Demand. Um, most people don't know who Cornerstone is, but um, they are, as I would define, the biggest SaaS vendor that no one knows about. Um, the company was founded in November of 2009. Uh, today we've grown to uh, over 5 million subscribers, mm -hmm. um, over uh, uh, 550 customers dealing with some of the biggest companies of the world. Mm -hmm. So it's been an uh, interesting ride to watch them on the analyst side. Yeah. And now I've reached the point that says, you know what, I, I love what these guys are doing. Um, I think the market is big enough that there's plenty of room for them to grow. And um, now that the company has gone public with a nice valuation, um, there's a, a great role for me to define where does the company go in the next two, three, four, right. and, and beyond that. But what do they do? Come on. I mean, yeah. You're a great company and nobody's heard of, but they... They do what? Yeah, yeah, they, So the, um, uh, the company found, started doing a lot of content delivery in, two, in, in 2009. And really where the company started to blow it out is doing uh, e-learning, learning management systems. That was yeah. really where the foundation was. But that's been around for 100 years. It's it? been around for a long time. But yeah. the differentiator was um, out of the gate, the company was a cloud vendor, right. multi-tenant SaaS vendor. No one else in the learning space was delivering right. in the cloud software as a service in a multi-tenant model. Right. Um, the other differentiator was we started out with very big companies. So the biggest of companies, some that are residing here in London, um, chose us. So we, we, we cut our teeth with the big companies doing software as a service in you know, those, the early 2000s. And so that's been the biggest differentiator. So that ability to deliver via the cloud has offered us so many opportunities to innovate in the product, develop a much wider portfolio. Today, we do everything from learning, performance, succession, all of those core talent management capabilities. Yeah. The challenges are very similar, mm -hmm. North America, EMEA, and, and elsewhere. Um, but there's very specific, um, uh, um, uh, the, the ways that we address them is very different. So over here, as we were talking about talent management, um, talent planning, talent pooling, succession planning, if you will, is very, very important over here. It's very important in the States, but what the, the way it's done over here is very different in terms of pooling the employees and really understanding how you can leverage the different um, talent and move them across the organization. Right, right. Um, versus in the States, it's very much around building out the hierarchies of the organization and things like that. So, uh, you know, the, the talent management space, as, as um, many folks know, has been growing uh, very rapidly with the organization. Growing like topsy, hasn't it? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've seen a number of the companies, uh, our competitors of the space, go public, yep. um, continue to grow much faster than traditional enterprise software spaces, uh, and we've been a part of that. So it's it's been fun to watch, and now I've decided, yeah, now's the time. Nothing wrong with that, Jason. So, in, you're you're here in Amir at the moment, and you've been meeting with customers, I believe, yeah. Yeah. And um, you're saying some of the largest ones that are around. You mentioned to me earlier on Barclays Bank. That's right. You know, in Europe, most people would know, well, so Europe, yeah, but most people would know who Barclays are, extremely large bank. Handling very sensitive data, would you say? Absolutely. Right. And they have no qualms about you as a company doing that? I mean, we've been doing cloud for, you know, 10 years. Okay. Um, you know, we've got all of the certifications to deliver via the cloud. We've got data centers right. both in North America and in India. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, I think the challenges that may have been around for, you know, three and four years ago are less of a concern today. Right. Um, those security issues are, you know, still very important. Yeah. Um, but they're not, you know, the, and you still have to go through the security audits, but very different from two or three years ago. Right. Um, the conversations are different, and in, in particular because our audience, which are traditionally HR and learning and development, and they're uh, very conservative people, aren't they normally? Yeah, they are. But I mean, what's interesting, you know, and I was talking to a number of them yesterday, is, um, you know, a lot of their core data still resides in the traditional systems, the traditional okay. ERP systems, right? right? And, and that's and, not going to change anytime soon. You know, I don't think it? so, All especially right. over here. I mean, we're seeing more change in, in North America than yeah, we are over here. here. Yes. Um, but what they want is they want the cloud layer that sits on top of that. Right. That's much more interactional, much more usable. Right. Um, faster pace in terms of you know development of the the application. We release four 
uh, releases a year. Yeah. So uh, they, they, they're not going to rip and replace um, a lot of those mm. core systems, but they wanted something that sits on top of it mm. that they can deploy to, to, to wider organizations. At Barclays, we're deploying to 140,000 individuals within the organization. Right. So they need applications that can reach the mass audience versus just the, you know, the 5 or 10% that's touching the ERP. Unusual to see um, a company come over to Europe so quickly in the sense that, I mean, you're in the, you, you, you've got this development role, which is about partnering, isn't it, right? Very unusual from where I'm sat to see a US company come over to Europe so so quickly, if you will, and say, look, you know, the, why is that? Is, uh, what's the opportunity? I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things. One is, you know, one of our first clients was a European client, okay. so that was a big big piece of it, you know, we we landed here um, uh, in EMEA in 2007, yeah. four years later, we've got, you know, north of, of uh, uh, 75 clients, but I think there's a couple of reasons. One is, um, you know, again, the cloud model helps us to be able to um, uh, to deploy across regions sure. within our product. We deliver in 15 languages, so, um, you know, that ability to adapt to the languages, but the, yeah, particular yeah. to me is very, very important. Yeah. Um, and the third aspect, and this is a little bit less tangible, is just we've got a, a really great uh, great team over here. Right. Um, where we've seen, where I've personally seen companies struggle to, that have gone from North America to EMEA is they, they put the commitment there, but the team is very, very fluid. They churn through um, different teams. We've it seen works the other way, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. It works the other Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And we've had a very solid team here that um, have continued to say we've got a leader here in EMEA um, by the name of Vincent that has just been fantastic, that has grown this market. Uh, and um, he's continuing to grow the market uh, very rapidly, so it's well, been a shining star for us. Okay, but a very new job for you, so I mean, obviously, you're a very enthusiastic bunny. Yeah. Aren't you? <laughs> what would you say are the top two, three things that you'd be thinking about, or is it a bit early? So it's still a little bit early. All I right. mean, you know, the, the company is still. I mean, we're still in fast growth mode. So the question for us is really product-wise. I mean, you know, the, the product innovation with us and with our competitors is still accelerating. Okay. So a lot of focus is obviously going deeper into the products that we have, but there's newer emergent areas that we're focusing a lot on social. So social for us is a big thing. So trying to embed social capabilities throughout all of our pro uh, products and platforms is very, very important. Um, secondarily is mobile. You know, mobile here yeah. particularly is very, very Absolutely, important. Yeah. So how can we mobile enable our products to handhelds, to tablets, things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, for us, our needs, um, uh, our CEO I was with earlier today was talking about how some of the things that we do is, is recession proof. And, you know, you can argue plus or minus, but, you know, in 2009 um, and 2010, you can argue that a lot of our clients' financial services, they took a big hit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, didn't necessarily affect us as much because, you know, in a recessionary economy, what happens in um, a lot of industries is there's more regulation. Yes. There's more certifications that are needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they didn't necessarily get rid of our products. In fact, they, they're using it more because of the, the mandates for certifications, the mandates for um, compliance training right. have, have actually increased, not decreased. Right. So, I mean, you know, good problems to have, but what we're trying to do is really solve the problem of when you bring an employee in to the day that they decide to leave or whatever happens, to manage that whole entire, uh, entire life cycle. Uh, and there's a lot of things, that, and you know, what we, what's traditionally happened five years ago is organizations bought the best of breed performance and the best of breed learning and the best of breed compensation solution. The market is now consolidated. We're one of those companies that have said, we want to do, we want to do it all. Right. And we are doing it all. What we're seeing is a lot of uptick. You know, when we get them in, in, into uh, accounts, you know, we start to expand it, and sometimes it doesn't happen as fast. But uh, oftentimes, within three or four years, as we see the, the value that they start to get, and then they say, okay, we want to buy performance, we want to buy succession. And next stop for you is Paris. So, I mean, what's in Paris other than the fact that it's a great city? <laughs> well, that's where our uh, EMEA headquarters is. Okay. So, it's in Paris. We have offices throughout uh, a lot of locations in, in uh, EMEA. Right. But, um, yeah, that's where our core team is in, in Paris. Great to see you. Good to Jason. see you, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.